The former Australian PM took dramatic and controversial steps to grip his own country's illegal immigration crisis back in 2013. And Isabel started by asking him what he did to fix it. First of all, you've got to make a decision that as a government, you are not going to allow people to come illegally by boat. And frankly, I think making that decision is the compassionate thing to do, because as long as people are coming illegally by boat, sponsored by people smugglers, you will have a lot of deaths at sea. Mm -hmm. We think that uh, in the period of the former Labor government, there was at least a thousand deaths at sea, including some that were particularly tragic, such as when a boat rocked up, uh, washed up on the rocks uh, at Christmas Island in a storm. So you've got to make the decision that the way is shut yeah. and anyone who comes illegally by boat uh, will be removed from the country as quickly as possible. Um, you've got to ensure uh, that uh, the, uh, uh, the human rights activists can't exploit the courts Mm. Uh, to keep people endlessly here uh, in limbo. You've mm. got to ensure that that can't be done. Anyone who turns up uh, in a safe country, having moved through a succession of safe countries before coming to what really is uh, their preferred destination, uh, is not a refugee, is not an asylum seeker. They are would-be economic migrants um, and they should not be able to claim asylum. They should not get the protection of the courts. Um, they should be returned uh, to a safe place as quickly as possible. So much more to come from that exclusive, but Tony Abbott was very clear, wasn't he? Stopping illegal boat crossings is the compassionate thing to do. Isabel Oakeshott, you spoke to Tony Abbott. Do you agree? Absolutely. And I think that listening to those clips, the vast majority of British voters would be cheering on that approach. Look, it's not compassionate to encourage people to make that perilous journey. We have already seen boats going down in the channel. It is not compassionate to encourage people who could easily be finding refuge from whatever it is they're fleeing from, if they really are fleeing from anything, in this country where, frankly, they may be left really doing very little for a year or more. We know this because the system is broken, stuck in some probably pretty shabby hotel or B&B with very little to live on. They're not allowed to work. How is that compassionate? Henry, <laughs> you've worked in, in politics and the, the Australian immigration policy is, is, is discussed a lot over here, Indeed isn't it? it, is. it it's, yeah. is it, did it used to be frowned upon? Is it now not frowned upon? Have things changed because of the desperation I, we find ourselves in? You know, we, we, we've got a polarised a response to this, haven't we? I mean, I personally think that Tony Abbott's spot on. And I think that in the UK, we've got a problem that we've got a government that in, in your introduction, you talked about, you know, we, we expected to be able to take back control of our borders when we left the European Union. The European Union actually was, was meant and did give the power to the, the politicians in Westminster, to the British government, to do what he is saying. They failed to do it. And we've got this polarisation in society where actually the vast, as Isabel says, the, the majority of the British population see this as chaos. Mm. They, the whole thing, the people smuggling, the, the risk to, to the migrants. And in fact, they're, they're also being exploited. Mm. Um, they're not just only trying to exploit the British economy. They're, trying, they're being exploited by the people smugglers as well. Yeah. Um, and we see all of this and we see the accommodation problem. And people are sick and tired of it. And all it does is demonstrate that the British government simply is not capable at the moment of getting a grip of any of these things. And so, I, you know, where, where we are, we've got this, this majority, silent majority of the population who want this dealt with, but then we've got a minority that are highly vocal, yeah. prepared to, to criticise and condemn very loudly... And for some reason, they seem to get traction and our politicians are frightened of them. That's Henry, not how I interpret it. It's not a minority. We're talking about worldwide criticism here. Come on. It's not just about minority. Next, you're going to tell me it's the, my but, fellow lefty brethren who are, the, who are to blame. But well, I think it's probably is actually it's, a failed and, and, government and, and, and policy. I, can I, can I bring it. Ivan in? Because I just I want to do this slowly. Because it, in Jeremy Callum I want to dissect this. I want to do a deep dive. Because we, we touch upon this almost every night. We've got a whole hour to discuss this. Ivan. Let's just, let's just, you're an immigration lawyer. 
Chaos is a great word that Henry Bolton used. It's a chaotic mess. I hear day in, day out, the Home Office is not fit for purpose. Everybody's being exploited. What's your response from a legal point of view to Tony Abbott's suggestion? Well, firstly, the laws in, in Australia, they don't allow a refugee to claim asylum. Mm. The majority of people coming across the channel are genuine refugees. This is my problem, uh, and, and yeah, we've uh, got an hour. The... the, the the majority. Nobody could give me a specific number. I, I will, I will sit here forever well, we and listen can. to all. They tell us that eighty percent of the of the claims that are made for asylum, and I'm sure I'll be correct. Right, well, eighty percent of the claims okay. are successful. But that, that, that doesn't that does necessarily not mean, mean they're genuine. That they are legitimate. No. They are. If you look at the level of training of the people who are processing these claims, for example, I'm going to take. You know, it's a, it's quite a high profile example, but the situation of Albania and Albanians. Yes. Okay? Albanian, NATO member state, member of the European Council, in accession talks to join the European Union, member of the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe. It's uh, all of these things. It's, uh, you've got universal health care and so on in, in Albania. Yes, it's a poor country. These are economic migrants. They have no legitimate claim to asylum in this country, but they're being granted it. The problem we face with small boats coming from France is just like the problem that mm -hmm. Australia faced with small boats arriving from Java. And here's how Prime Minister Abbott told Isabel he fixed it. Watch this. We turned boats back to Java mm. uh, because uh, that was where the overwhelming majority of these boats had initiated. Given that they'd come from Java, um, we sent them back to Java. And if the people smugglers tried to scuttle their boats, um, mm. uh, we would take people temporarily on board Australian government vessels, mm. uh, take them to uh, uh, within Kui of Indonesia's territorial waters, put them on an unsinkable orange life raft and send them back to Java. And I knew uh, that we were about to win this particular battle uh, when early in 2014, on the front page of Australia's biggest selling newspaper, there was a photograph of a big orange life raft washed up on a beach mm. in Java. Um, the people on it, uh, had arrived perfectly safely mm. back to where back back to the place from which they'd set out, uh, but that sent a massive message uh, to all of the would-be illegal migrants to Australia: you cannot come, because if you in invest ten thousand dollars or whatever it is with the people smuggler, you'll just end up back where you started, uh, and that was really uh, that was really the beginning of our complete success here. It's interesting, um, Isabel. I go back to remembering those times and, and people were horrified and yet he made the point that it was greeted with initial scepticism but then uh, joy almost by Australians. And I want to paint the picture of what's happening right here, right now. We sit here and we talk about, you know, it's all not fit for purpose. Do we not need perhaps something as seemingly outrageous as what Abbott did eight years ago to deal with a problem that won't go away? 100% we need that. You know, it isn't outrageous to protect your territorial integrity. It isn't outrageous to send people who are taking an illegitimate route, who probably in many cases don't have a legitimate claim to asylum, to send them safely back where they came from, which is France, which isn't too dangerous. And the point he's making there as a government is that you have to mean it. It's no mm -hmm. good endlessly telling voters that you're going to get on top of it, acknowledging that it's not good enough, it's not fit for purpose, and nothing ever actually happening. What's worrying is we're making assessments on people's asylum claims without hearing them. Mm -hmm. But, well, but Mike, a... can I jump in for a second? I absolutely understand that, and I know our, our laws are different on pushing back boats. I said already maybe we should change the law. But where you sit and you say we're making assumptions, yes. the people coming here are taking advantage mm -hmm. of a law that allows them to take the mickey and disappear into our society. So I'm why isn't our law stronger? Are we in the convention or are we, are we out? What is the convention? Well, because look, we seem to be... Tony doing... Abbott, that, that policy yeah. is unlawful. Within the convention, Article 33 prohibits refoulement. And what that means is you cannot send somebody back to a country where they may, there is a reasonable risk that they will suffer irreparable harm. Right, so right. let's just cover that. What, what's but... the irreparable harm of going back to Albania that's not a war-torn country? And with respect, Tony Abbott's policy worked. Nothing wrong with that. They can absolutely go back. In fact, Albania has been on the white list since mm -hmm. 2004. So the laws are already here to return Albanians. 
The problem's not, is the law there to do that? The problem is we're not doing it quick enough. Remember, we had, and we tried the turnaround policy, it wasn't about the law, it was about the disgust that people had for the proposal, OK? Nobody wanted to do it. We know that, um, that the, uh, the, the Navy didn't want to do it, we know that the Army didn't want to do it, we know that nobody it's wanted... Not quite sorry, it's, it's, Paula, it's not quite correct. It's a disgusting no, policy, no, it's, it's which not quite everyone correct. found it, abhorrent it's not quite and correct. nobody wanted That's to do it. If, no. if I may say, it's not quite, that's not quite correct. Um, the reason that there was a problem there was because there was no safe technique to do it. And, and, and actually, whilst I agree absolutely in the situation that Tony Abbott and the Australians found themselves in, that worked. We have to bear in mind that we're talking about different types of vessels now mm. moving yeah. migrants, mm. and therefore there are different sort of risk scenarios in terms of turning them back. Um, casting a dinghy adrift uh, or a, a life raft adrift in the channel... Uh, the pre prevalent wind is going to blow them towards the UK, not away in the currents. Um, so you've got, you've, you've got a number of different things there. But it's not beyond the wit of man to do it. So then... from the first part, we ascertain that everybody around the table, and in fact in the country, understands absolutely that the system is broken mm -hmm. and something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But it's how you do that.